Beneath the sands of ancient Egypt lie hidden truths waiting to be unveiled, but what if the key to unlocking these mysteries is held by a single enigmatic figure? Enter Zahi Hawass, the legendary Egyptologist whose secrets may shatter everything we thought we knew about ancient Egypt's discoveries. Prepare to step into the shadows as we expose the hidden truths that Zahi Hawass is concealing, forever changing our perception of this mesmerizing civilization. Get ready to journey into the unknown, for the secrets of ancient Egypt are about to be revealed. Authorities weren't expecting to find a plan better suited to an Indiana Jones film when they confiscated a diplomatic pouch at the Naples port. The pouch, which was found in March of last year, included a wide range of Egyptian artifacts, including colorful pharaonic mummy masks, about 200 tiny artifacts, and more than 20,000 coins. It was obvious who was responsible for the theft of the riches from Egypt, since they were all powerful and well-connected people. The trade of smuggling antiquities is almost as ancient as the artifacts themselves. However, since the Arab Spring, commerce has increased in Egypt, and social media has made it simpler to get concealed goods. The problem is so severe that it is visible from space. Massive holes in the earth where stolen artifacts have been found are visible in satellite photos of archaeological sites before and after they were plundered. Additionally, there is a lot of money at stake. According to the U.S.-based Antiquities Coalition, since 2011, Egyptian antiquities have been smuggled overseas for an estimated $3 billion U.S. dollars. The exact amount taken is still mainly unclear. Many objects were never formally recorded because, according to some Egyptologists, notably the controversial and flamboyant former antiquities minister Dr. Zahi Hawass, only around 30% of ancient Egypt has been discovered. Even now, excavations uncover ancient artifacts that were previously undiscovered. According to Dr. Hawass, modern Egypt is built on the foundation of ancient Egypt, so people can dig in the courtyard of their homes and find antiquities. Illegal commerce has increased over the last seven years as a result of unrest in Egypt. After 30 years of totalitarian control, President Hosni Mubarak was forced from office in 2011 by the Arab Spring demonstrations and with him the police state. Raiders rushed in to pillage hundreds of archaeological sites and museums from the Pharaonic, Coptic, and Islamic periods since they were mainly unattended. Through Egypt's international ports or porous borders, the artifacts were transported to the lucrative international antiquities illicit market. According to Shaban Abdulgawad, the director of the Repatriation Division at the Ministry of Antiquities, many of the antiquities find their way into private collections in Europe and the United States, which are by far the two biggest markets for Egyptian goods. They also end up in other parts of the Middle East, Asia, and even Australia. He claims that it is a worldwide commerce that occurs everywhere. An anthropologist from Washington, D.C., named Katie A. Paul, just finished a six-year investigation into Egypt's illicit antiquities trade. About 2,000 Egyptian artifacts have been seized at ports worldwide, according to her research of official sources, social media, and conventional media. Large, well-armed gangs and organized trafficking networks that overwhelm security at antiquity sites are only one kind of trafficker. Another type is an individual in a community who makes a fortunate discovery on their land and sells it to a middleman or the local mafia. According to Ms. Paul, many of the people are in dire financial straits, and it is a symptom of a larger economic problem with the downfall of tourism after the revolution. The rise of the illicit trade has also been significantly influenced by social media. According to Ms. Paul, a Facebook group started in 2016 to crowdsource knowledge on how to conduct your own illegal excavation garnered more than 50,000 members in a year. Dr. Hoas and other Egyptian officials have also been charged with participating in the smuggling operation. In 2013, he was charged with corruption and brought to court, but the accusations were dropped. Weak individuals want to claim that authorities were engaged. No official is engaged in smuggling, the speaker claims. 
Under the condition of anonymity, a foreign archaeologist told the ABC that they believed inspectors were involved. The police are often involved, inspectors are sometimes complicit, and the military is sometimes implicated because they fly items out on military aircraft, the archaeologist claims. Looting and smuggling had significantly less restrictions in the past. During the colonial period, many artifacts were either removed out of the country illegally or presented to other nations, including the Luxor obelisk that is currently in Paris. But during the last several decades, that has altered. A UNESCO convention was ratified in 1970 to stop the illegal export of cultural property. The Protection of Antiquities Law was enacted in Egypt, particularly in 1983. That, however, does not assist with many previous deletions. When it comes to artifacts seized decades ago, there is sometimes no legal recourse. Joan Howard, a lady from Perth, made headlines in Egypt last year when she displayed her vast collection of artifacts to Australian media. In the 1960s and 1970s, Mrs. Howard spent a lot of time collecting antiquities around the Middle East, especially Egypt, as the wife of a UN official serving there. She was allowed to bring them back to her suburban Perth home thanks to diplomatic privileges and lenient local regulations. The Egyptian government was unimpressed. It's insane, Dr. Hoas adds. I don't think she has any right to keep antiquities in her house at all. The Strengthened Antiquities Ministry of Egypt lodged a formal grievance with the Australian Embassy in Cairo. However, the Australian Department of Communications said in a statement that there is no legal justification for the Australian government to take any action since Mrs. Howard's collection was imported before the Protection of Movable Cultural Heritage Act 1986 went into effect. Joan Howard's daughter informed the ABC that her mother had been entirely exonerated and firmly denied any wrongdoing. It seems like there is happy news in Egypt about a new shipment of returned antiques virtually every week. Thanks to a number of agreements with various nations, 1,600 pieces, including 1,000 only in 2016, according to Mr. Abdel Gawad, have been returned since 2011. The wealth found in the diplomatic pouch in Naples was returned to its country in June and temporarily shown there. According to Mr. Abdel Gawad, an excavation site was probably where the artifacts were taken, according to Egypt today. Though they are smaller and less likely to bring large audiences to museums than some of the more famous lost treasures, they are like the majority of the objects that have been recovered. One of my ambitions is to return the Rosetta Stone from the British Museum, the Hemiunu, the Great Pyramid's engineer, and the Skull of Nefertiti, according to Mr. Abdel Gawad. But given that many of the most renowned items were stolen from Egypt legitimately in accordance with the rules of the time, and that foreign museums have often been loath to return some of their most valuable exhibits, that may not be simple. In the mesmerizing world of ancient Egypt, where mysteries lie buried in the sands of time, one renowned figure looms large, Zahi Hawass, but behind the glittering facade of his accomplishments, dark accusations swirl, threatening to unveil a shocking truth that could shatter the foundations of his esteemed reputation. You will be captivated as we delve deep into the hidden secrets, the whispered scandals, and the startling revelations that leave no doubt. These accusations against Zahi Hawass are gravely serious. Zahi Hawass Abbas was born on May 28, 1947. He is an Egyptian archaeologist and Egyptologist who served twice as Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs. He has also worked in Nile Delta, Western Desert, and Upper Nile Valley archaeological sites. Hoas was born in a little town near Damietta and served as an inspector, a combination of administrator and archaeologist, at the Great Pyramids. Hoas claims to have discovered the mummy of Nefertiti, the beautiful wife of King Akhenaten and Queen of Egypt. Mr. Hawass and his archaeological team began searching for Queen Nefertiti's tomb on the west bank of Luxor on December 9, 2021. We already have DNA from mummies from the 18th dynasty, from Akhenaten to Amenhotep Ali, or Aidwai, as well as two unnamed mummies labeled Kv 21A and B. In October, we will be able to disclose the discovery of the mummies of Tutankhamun's wife, Ankhesenemun, and her mother, Nefertiti.
In Tomb KV-35, there is also the mummy of a ten-year-old boy. If that child is Tutankhamun's brother and Akhenaten's son, the problem posed by Nefertiti will be solved, he stated. I am sure that I will reveal which of the two unnamed mummies could be Nefertiti, Ms. Hawass added. When a new thought about ancient Egypt emerges, Hawass is frequently the first person who either backs it up or knocks it down by making large claims and setting down a lot of ideas. He found the tomb of the people who built the pyramids in Kiza. An archaeological team led by Dr. Zahi Hawass unearthed many additional tombs belonging to workmen who built the Khufu and Kafir pyramids. This is the first time tombs like the ones discovered in the 1990s, which belong to the late 4th and 5th dynasties, Dr. Hawass remarked. The Valley of the Golden Mummies is a massive burial site near Bahari Oasis in Egypt's western desert. Zahi Hawass and his Egyptian crew discovered roughly 250 mummies approximately 2,000 years old in 1996 and retrieved them over many seasons. The excavator eventually calculated a total of almost 10,000 mummies. There is no one quite like Dr. Zahi Hawass, sometimes known as the real Indiana Jones. Hawass is old school, prompting some to believe he is ancient Egypt's mythbuster, while others argue he is an out-of-touch obstructionist. Regardless of your opinion, Hawass has been crucial in publicizing and teaching people all around the world about the glories of ancient Egypt. Hawass has a long list of impressive accomplishments. However, it is said that his numerous action-packed documentary appearances earned him the nickname The Real Indiana Jones. One day, George Lucas came to Egypt to have dinner with me and asked why my hat had become more famous than Harrison Ford's hat. I told him, my hat is the real archaeology hat, and Harrison Ford's hat is the fake one. They call me Indiana Jones because of the way I do action in archaeology, because of the films I've done on the History and Discovery channels in the States, he timidly says about the roots of his international nickname. This a daring assertion, given that the actual Indiana Jones is a fictitious character, but not surprising given that Hawass is widely regarded as the nation's foremost authority on all things Egyptian. Renowned archaeologist and Emmy Award winner Zahi Hawass has shifted his focus to his latest television show, Revealer of Secrets. This unique program, set to premiere on October 20th, offers a fresh perspective on ancient Egypt by debunking online myths and exploring the continued practice of ancient traditions in modern-day Egypt. Hawass emphasizes that the 16 episodes of the show not only provide insights into Egypt's past, but also offer guidance on how to live in the present by emulating the customs of the past. While the show is currently only available in Arabic, Hawass expresses his hope for translations, allowing people worldwide to benefit from its content. Revealer of Secrets breaks new ground by showcasing both the historical and contemporary aspects of Egypt in a television format for the first time. In addition to showcasing the unchanging traditions and lifestyles of Egyptian farmers, Hawass seizes the opportunity to dispel popular conspiracy theories on the show. For example, in one episode, he debunks the notion of Red Mercury, explaining that it is a baseless legend with no factual basis. People falsely believe that red mercury found in mummies can grant them control over the devil or the ability to heal the sick. Through Revealer of Secrets, Hawass aims to address such topics that have never been explored before, providing crucial education not only for Egyptians, but also for a global audience. Hawass's expertise and reputation as a prominent figure in Egyptology have earned him the title of Ancient Egypt Mythbuster. His new show serves as a platform for challenging misconceptions and promoting accurate historical understanding. By using his extensive knowledge and experience, Hawass aims to enlighten viewers and rectify long-held myths surrounding ancient Egypt. Hawass, well known for his debunking skills, criticizes notions that lack strong proof. He refutes Nicholas Reeves' theory that Nefertiti's tomb is hidden below the walls of King Tut's tomb. Hawass criticizes Nefertiti's absence of a name, her devotion to Aten, and the nonsensical idea of enclosing the queen's spirit within a tomb. He's waiting for the findings of a radar scan to resolve the question, and he's still certain that there's nothing behind Tutankhamun's tomb. 
Hoas emphasizes the importance of compelling proof before making statements, arguing that mere speculation can harm the field of Egyptology. Hoas is opposed to Jean-Pierre Houdin's hypothesis that the pyramids were built with both inner and external ramps. He claims that there is no evidence to back up this assertion and blames the Scan Pyramid Project for purportedly seeking to validate it. Before making any announcements about new discoveries, Hoas emphasizes the significance of comprehensive scientific examination and consultation with a team of experts. However, it is not stated whether Hawass is subjected to the same examination when proposing his own hypotheses for exploratory digs. Hate mail from believers in ancient alien beliefs accuses Hawass of concealing proof that the pyramids were created by extraterrestrials. Some supporters, he believes, are opportunistic or misinformed. Despite bad headlines, tourists continue to visit Egypt leading the recommendation that Egypt caters to these believers with merchandise and tours, with the goal of improving the economy rather than altering their views. Hoas suggests boosting tourism by sending Egyptian exhibits across the world and having officials advertise Egypt's safety. Rather than focusing on inexpensive tourism, he focuses on recruiting tourists who can contribute to the economy. Given the current situation of the business, however, any tourists should be welcomed in order to revitalize Egypt's tourism sector. Despite obtaining financial help from Japan, the Grand Museum's opening has been substantially delayed. Hoas opposes the proposal to open the King Tut Gallery separately and advises delaying the opening until the entire museum is finished by November 4, 2022, the 100th anniversary of Tutankhamun's discovery. However, with the project experiencing several delays, the question is can Egypt afford further setbacks? Despite criticism, Hawass is a powerful figure in Egypt and across the world. His lectures and discoveries increase tourism and interest in Egypt's ancient history. If the hypotheses he questions are proven erroneous, it will strengthen his authority, potentially giving him the title of Mythbuster of Ancient Egypt. If these theories are found to be correct, he may be viewed as obstructive. Nonetheless, as a renowned person, Hawass has the authority to speak out on current investigations, getting him the nickname of real-life Indiana Jones. In the world of Egyptology, Zahi Hawass is a polarizing figure that elicits both respect and condemnation. While allegations and disputes surround him, there is no doubting his tremendous accomplishments or the mystique that surrounds the man recognized as Egypt's modern-day custodian of ancient secrets. Egypt is a land steeped in history and culture, with its ancient pyramids, temples, and tombs serving as a testament to its glorious past. However, with a rich history comes a host of controversies, and Egypt has seen its fair share of them over the years. One name that is often associated with controversy in Egypt is Zahi Hawass, a prominent Egyptologist and former Minister of Antiquities. Hawass has been involved in many disputes throughout his career ranging from accusations of corruption to clashes with foreign archaeologists. He has also been criticized for his abrasive personality and his tendency to dominate the field of Egyptology in Egypt. Archaeologist and former Egyptian Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs, Zahi Hawass claims to have discovered Queen Nefertiti's mummy. But why does this discovery hold much significance? Is it related to Zahi Hawass' corruption, or is there something else? Well, let's find out. Nefertiti was famous for her beauty, which was immortalized in an iconic bust currently housed in Germany's News Museum. However, Nefertiti is most known for her marriage to the divisive pharaoh Akhenaten. They aim to change Egyptian religion by developing a monotheistic religion centered on the exclusive worship of the sun deity Aten. She may have reigned for a few years following her husband Akhenaten's death. However, the next king, Tutankhamun, reintroduced polytheism to Egypt. His stepmother was Nefertiti and Tut finally married his half-sister, Anki Cinnamon, the daughter of Nefertiti. Archaeologists have claimed to have discovered Nefertiti's tomb for the last seven years, but all these instances were multiple misidentifications. But now, Hawass is leading excavations at Luxor's Valley of the Kings, where they discovered two mummies marked KV-21A and KV-21B in a single tomb at the valley's eastern end. 
This is not common since many tombs in the Valley of the Kings contain multiple mummies, but here they have found only two. These two are unique, and it is believed that one of the mummies is of Nefertiti. Hoas himself predicts that they would be able to announce the discovery of the mummy of Tutankhamun's wife, Enkisinamun, and her mother, Nefertiti, by October 2022. However, several months have passed since his announcement, and the archaeological community awaits confirmation of the discovery of the century with bated breath. Is there something wrong going on behind the doors, and why has Hoas not revealed the discovery yet? Let us know about your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's discuss another controversy of Zahi Hoas, where he has been called for interrogation over allegations that he assisted three German amateurs in stealing rock samples from within Egypt's tallest pyramid. Although Hawass dismisses the allegations, claiming that there is nothing against me, but keeping in view his track record, what do you think is true? In April 2013, three Germans, two amateur archaeologists and a filmmaking companion, went into the inner sanctuary of Giza's Great Pyramid, the last of the ancient world's seven marvels to remain largely intact. The three, conspiracy theorists Dominique Gorlitz, Stefan Erdmann, and Peter Hofer, aimed to prove that the pyramid was not, as has long been assumed, the last burial place of the pharaoh Khufu, but rather a vestige of an even earlier civilization. In order to demonstrate this, they scraped a portion of the Kardash, the symbol that indicates for whom the pyramid was erected, and sent it to Germany for examination. Following worldwide outrage, the samples were returned, and the men were tried in absentia, along with five Egyptian officials accused of assisting them in unlawfully accessing the pyramid. All eight were found guilty after a trial in which the five officials alleged that Hoas, a controversial former antiquities minister, had assisted the theft of the samples while filming a documentary on the Kardash. When the court called Hawass for interrogation regarding his role, he denied any involvement, claiming that he left the government two years before the crime occurred. He acknowledges that, as Antiquities Minister, he approved the documentary, but claims that no one touched the car duches and no one even put their hands near it during shooting. Regardless of the result of his interrogation, this is the latest setback in a once promising career that has stalled since Hoas was driven out of Egypt's antiquities ministry after the 2011 revolt. The flamboyant Hoas became regarded as Egypt's Indiana Jones in the 2000s, appearing in various Egyptology documentaries as well as his own reality show. Time magazine named him one of the world's 100 most important people in 2006, and he subsequently placed his name on a brand of chalky pants. When dictator Hosni Mubarak was deposed, Hawass was stained by association, and although remaining in office for a few months, he resigned under a cloud of unproven corruption claims. In an interview with The Guardian last year, Hawass hinted at a possible return, stating that he was the only man for the job. It's a gift from God. Hawass stated of his leadership abilities. When I talk, people listen to me, and when others talk, people sleep, he subsequently said. I don't see why people are criticizing me on this. I put Egypt in everyone's hearts all across the world. Previously, only foreigners did that. I traveled to England and got in a lift, and when she saw me, she collapsed. She couldn't believe I was staying at her hotel. What should I do? Share your thoughts on these controversies in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content like this. The New York Times described Hawass's clothing line as a line of rugged kekis, denim shirts, and carefully worn leather jackets that are meant according to the catalog copy, to hark back to Egypt's golden age of discovery in the early 20th century. The clothing was first sold at Harrods in London in April 2011. Critics claim Hawass clothing commercializes Egyptian history and they object to their knowledge that models had sat on or scuffed priceless ancient artifacts during the photo shoot, an allegation Hawass and the clothing producers deny. Hawass already offers a range of Stetson hats, that very much resemble the ones worn by Harrison Ford in the Indiana Jones movies. Well, if these are not enough, then let's move on to the next controversy that has pulled Hawass into hot waters. Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass, 
faces backlash after advocating for a single call to prayer across all mosques in a given region. In Egypt, recent remarks by prominent Egyptian archaeologist and former minister of antiquities Zahi Hoas questioning the necessity to increase the call to prayer came as a shock. Those who criticized him for his words, according to Hawass, can hit their head against the wall. Egyptians are extremely proud of Hawass, who has added value to Egyptian archaeology, Alishar professor Ahmed Karima told Al Monitor, but I believe he would have been better off not making these pronouncements, particularly as deciding is not within his purview. Karima urged the endowments ministry to choose the greatest voices to conduct the call to prayer. According to a report provided by the Cairo governorate at the end of June, the number of mosques associated with the Ministry of Endowments in the capital has risen to 4,775. Thank you for watching this video about the controversy surrounding Zahi Hawass. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.